This one's from uh, Joan Jensen. Um, she says, I'd like to know, is it actually necessary to prune? How much less fruit per tree or bush would you get if you just let nature do its thing? I realize that would diff, this would differ from species to species, but maybe just as, as a rule of thumb. Like is, it, is, yeah, is there a loss in productivity? Do you have to do it? That's right. As a rule, you will not get any reduction if you don't prune. In fact, if you don't prune, you'll have 100% of your yield. Okay, let's say your tree could produce 150 uh, kilos of fruit or your bush could produce two kilos of fruit. So if you don't prune, you'll get 150 kilos of fruit on that tree divided into 600 fruit. So, or, or there, uh, or, or let's say a thousand fruit. I know where you're going with this, okay. So you'll get the same weight of production, yes. but your fruit may be this big. And if you pruned and you end up with 30% less fruit or 50% less fruit, but they'll be this big. So that is one of the main reasons people prune is to get the size up and to get the color. Because if you're if you've noticed like that lady who had an 80 year old apple tree, I'm sure the majority of those fruit probably are ripe, but they're green. There's, there's not enough light for them to get red. And for many uh, apple cultivars, they need a, a, an amount of light to actually get red. So that's kind of one of the reasons. So that's why, is it wrong to not prune? No, it's not wrong to not prune. Uh, it just really depends. Why are you pruning? Like, what do you want? You don't have to prune. Like, if you've never started and your tree has never been pruned, I would say just leave it. If you really want to prune, go help somebody who has trees. <laughs> but don't prune yours. And right. it'll make it so much easier. Like, you want to prune, but that you have to figure, what's your goal? If your goal is, I want to get out in the spring, and I understand because hey, pruning is great. You can start your gardening season before you can do anything else. Yes. You can't dig. The ground is still frozen, but you could be out there pruning. Mm. So your goal is the exercise and getting outside. Nothing wrong with that. That's the goal of your trees is to provide you with entertainment, exercise, you know, sunshine. That's a valid goal. Then know why are you pruning them? You know, yes for that. But are you pruning them to get bigger fruit, to get more fruit? So a tree is clay. You know, it'll do whatever you want it to do. You have to really realize, what do you want out of it? What, right. What's it for? Right. That's good advice. Um, uh, this one, the next one's from uh, Fallon Wilson. Uh, she says, uh, we have an old uh, overgrown orchard with trees that have grown large and wild for, possi for possibly 30 years or more. Uh, how much can we prune off to bring them back to production? Well, the basic rule is you could take off a third of the volume. That's not as always as simple because 30% of the volume might be on a big old tree might be two branches. You've cut two branches, but I mean on a, you know, two branches like this is a third of the volume. You say, well, how do you know? It's like, imagine all the leaves in the tree and now you've taken off a third of the leaves. Yeah. It could be two branches, it could be eight branches. You know, you can do it in many ways. I like the, the Pareto principle, which is 80-20, and it really applies for pruning. So 80% of the cuts you make will give you 20% of the results. So like, imagine hey, you do all these pruning and you get this much results. Right, think, right. Come on. Or 20% of the cuts you make give you 80% of the results. So your old trees, and I, I can say that because I've tried it. When I learned this, I didn't have a lot of time that spring because we, we learned it in like in March. And by the time we had done the course, I thought, geez, you know, th it's getting late in the season. So I thought... What, how can I prune my whole orchard block in the quickest time possible? So I said, all right, 
I know it needs pruning to learn, like based on what I learned. And I said, okay, I can only prune two branches per tree. That's it. All of a sudden you go, what? I can only make two cuts, two cuts per tree. You think, well, how can I do that? How can I prune my orchard with two cuts per tree? You look and you think, I can make 15 cuts. Yes, sometimes you can make 50 cuts, you know, but it'll only equal two cuts. So that 80-20 is really it. You want to focus on the 20% of cuts that'll give you the biggest difference. And often in a big old abandoned tree, you have to look at your tree and all you focus on, look at the trunk, clear the chimney. That Don't even count that because that's what it helps you. The other thing the chimney helps is it all of a sudden it exposes the main silhouette of the tree. Now you can see the tree because when you have so many branches, especially in the core, you can't even really make out what's, you know, what's going on with this tree. Clear the chimney. Now you can see. Now you look at the tree and you go, all I'm looking at, and this is what I did over three years, I completely changed that orchard from a lot of work. Now I only prune it about every second year because all I was looking at is I'd look at the trunk and I'd go, okay, look it up and down. And that's one of the the videos I show you how to look at a tree. I mean, it's, it's really, you have to be able in a glance, like you stand there and you look up and down. Okay, I know what I have to do to this tree. So I would look up and down and all I was looking for is, I'm looking for the branch with the most vertical angle. So if you say I have 15 branches on the tree, I didn't look anywhere except along the trunk. I'm not looking down on the, no, I don't wanna touch the, don't bother. And, and that's what uh, Jean-Marie Lespinasse was always saying. He says, leave the integrity of the branch. Integrity means let that branch, and a branch does, he explained it as a hand, you know. You got your, sh you're the trunk. Then you got your shoulder, which is the junction of that branch. And you want the shoulder to actually have a branch going down. And then when you get to the end, you have a branch. And just like us, and it's amazing how a tree is like us. So you want a branch that's like this. You want the end of the branch to have multiple branches fanning out. And if you look at a tree, the only way it can have branches all around the tree is if the branches, as they get further from the tree, they fan out, they yeah. open up. Yeah. So you look at that, and this is where he said, don't touch the integrity of the tree because we want to go in there and, oh, I think this one should go. And I think this one should go. And no, no, no don't no. bother with that. Don't mess with the branch. The branch has probably grown really well. It's optimized. And it, sorry? It's optimized. It is. Yeah. And that's where that third step is. If you want to touch the branch and the only thing you do on the branch is remove everything that's underneath. And that's so easy to do because I do it with a big heavy glove and you just run your glove under it, bang, it breaks everything off. You don't even cut it unless it's a, a branch because none of those are really any worthwhile because they're all shaded. So you cut all that off, bang, all of a sudden your branch has had a, a, a pruning without any thinking, oh, which one do I touch? And, so you look at your tree up and down, you look at the branch angle, and how I was able to make two cuts is I would take, I'd say, okay, I have some branches like this, I have some like this, some like this, and some like this. So yeah. that's my range of branches. And all I do by looking up and down is I'd say, I wanna cut off two branches that are the most vertical. So I went the first year from trees that were mostly like this, and then I take those off. Now I'm left with some that are kind of like this. Like they're no longer like this, they're like this. The next year I take those off. Now I'm left with what? Branches that are like this. And in the third year I took those off. Now all I'm left with is branches that are like this. Well, I tell you that completely changed the orchard because I look at the tree and I go, look at it up and down. There's there's nothing that I need to, I don't need to do anything on that tree. That makes a lot of, makes a lot of sense, actually. It, it, 
it really, you know, that that's why I say go see that video because it it makes you realize it's not that complicated, but you have to understand from the tree's perspective. Yes. And so I talk about hormones. I'm not a, I think I talk about in that one, but anyway, the whole hormonal effect of juvenile and adult and so on. And there's some important points, but when you get them, it really takes the, I say it takes the guesswork. The best is when you go and you go to prune and you go, if I cut this, I know this will happen. So that yeah. ability to project the next two, three years, that, that takes all the, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure. You look at a tree and you go, I know exactly what this tree is gonna do. Right. And that comes with, I mean, it comes a bit with practice, but yeah. it comes with understanding the principles and, and knowing how the tree will react. Right.